In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With you, sir. Father Kenny, it's great to celebrate this Mass tonight with you and with Deacon Aruna. We extend a very warm welcome, most especially to the parents of the students of the class of 2021. Mr. Kilduff, Mr. Kiefer, thank you for inviting me to be the celebrant tonight as we mark this very significant milestone on the journey of life in these young students. We come together as God's family, peaceful, grateful. We stand in the presence of our risen Savior, humbly acknowledging our sins and asking Christ for mercy and strength. I confess to Almighty God and, and to, to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly I have sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the peace of God will be with you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rains came, the rains fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. This evening I have in my hand a little box that contains pieces of stone and shards of mortar. It's a little box that is just filled with memories for me and for my family. It was back in the 19th century. My great-grandparents homesteaded on a plot of land in north central Kansas. The farm remained in our family for years upon years until nearly the close of the last century when Uncle Phil died. But as a young man, I gathered those artifacts from the sod foundation, the foundation of our family's first farmhouse back in the pioneer days of Kansas. When I was just graduating from high school, I stood with my dad and my uncle out in the wheat fields of the farm. And there I listened intently to stories of the early Thomas household struggling to eke out a living on these unforgiving plains of Kansas. My dad and my uncle spoke of the hardships that my grandparents and great-grandparents faced at the dawn of every planting season, unsettling accounts of failed crops, scorching drought, damaging hail, and periodic plagues of voracious locusts. They described in detail April 14th of 1935 swirling clouds of dust that smothered everything in its path, the onset of the epic Dust Bowl days. They recounted the Great Depression when grandfather stood with hat in hand at a local bank, begging for credit, trying to desperately rescue the farm from certain foreclosure. I heard for the first time my dad's account, his fear and trembling as the KKK gained ascendancy in this part of Kansas, bedeviling Catholics and terrorizing the small black community that had settled there just after the Civil War. The Klan that burned a fiery cross 
on the rise just west of the farm, an act that galvanized my father's Catholic faith and made him strong and sturdy forever. But more than these accounts of hardship, I was so grateful to learn the source of my family's inherent optimism and unbreakable spirit founded on the blessed assurance that God will see us through. All things will be better tomorrow if we but stick together and place our trust in God. Dear young people, class of 2021, this little box of stones symbolize my personal connection with four generations of my family, memories of faith and perseverance in time of trouble, of our enduring hope rooted in the love of Christ and the church he founded on the shoulders of the apostles. On this baccalaureate evening, I want to suggest to each and every one of our graduating students, each of you is holding a special box of memories deep within your heart. Treasured memories, hallowed memories, painful memories, grateful memories, blessed memories, rooted in faith, embedded in family and friendship, memories of both joy and sorrow, of hardships and happiness, so many of these memories born in your years of formation at our beloved Bishop Gorman High School. As I help you open up tonight your personal box of memories, I ask you this. Call to mind the names and faces, the times and places that each of these memories trigger. They are the memories you'll carry with you for the rest of your lives. Reminders that your lives too are built on a firm, solid, lasting foundation of family, faith, and friendship. Memories that nothing and no one can ever take away. On this baccalaureate day, first of all, in the eye of your mind, focus on treasured memories, those special times and special friends, your memories of laughter and amusement, of dances and parties, of big games and gridiron victories, your times on stage or before judges, the times you achieved your personal best, times marked by tears of joy or tears of jubilation, treasured memories that will walk with you in the chambers of your heart for the rest of your lives. Think about the hallowed memories, times you spent in service to the poor, lending helping hands to those in need, precious hours in celebration at Holy Mass, your days of retreat, hours of reflection, kairos moments, those unexpected blessings when your relationship with Christ was strengthened, your prayer life was deepened, and ultimate questions probed and pondered. What about the painful memories? Memories of dashed dreams, unwelcomed disappointments, so many that encroached on your senior year. Call to mind those personal losses and tender memories of things that might have been. Think of the dark and menacing shadow of COVID and its impact on your family, its health and financial security and its lasting effects on this, your senior year. These two are realities you carry in your box of memories. 
all the while, never forgetting for a single moment that adversity and disappointment are harsh but irreplaceable teachers in every person's life, no exception. And those blessed memories, favorite teachers, kind administrators, selfless staff who have poured out their lives for you and given you the best they have to offer, preparing you for a future marked by unparalleled opportunity, opportunity that so many in your generation view no more than the stuff, the stuff of unreachable dreams. And there are grateful memories. Caring family, selfless parents, the people who continued to love you when you were not so lovable, of grandparents, godparents, dear friends who spoiled you, people who sacrificed so much to give you the opportunity of a Gorman education and a future filled with hope. For the next few minutes, I want you to hear from your peers, students selected by Gorman leaders to give voice to special times and special people who made the Gorman experience a unique moment in your treasured box of memories, a moment never to be forgotten. I have proposed a series of questions to your classmates. The first question I asked them, how would you describe the Bishop Gorman experience to a complete stranger. I have chosen Ellie Schmidt as the first respondent to that question. Where are you, Ellie? Your words were beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> the Bishop Gorman experience is like no other. It isn't just staff and students coming to work or school every day because they are required to. It is a family, a family coming together and welcoming you with open arms. The Bishop Gorman experience is something you don't often see within other Catholic high schools, a bond that stays with you beyond your years of graduating. Once a Gale, always a Gale is the motto we live by and is an unforgettable experience. We all share laughter, excitement, tears, good times and bad, but we stick through it with each other, never leaving anyone behind. That's what I'd say to a complete stranger. Beautifully said, Ellie. Thank you. Give her a hand. <laughs> Ellie, okay. How has Bishop Gorman changed or improved your spiritual life, especially a relationship with Jesus and the church? I've chosen Aiden to respond. Aiden Nyhoff, where are you? Beautiful words, Aiden. Bishop Gorman has greatly improved my spiritual life through campus ministry, and the school's strong relationship with Holy Spirit Parish. While volunteering through campus ministry, I've been able to meet so many wonderful people from all walks of life, whether they be co-volunteers or the people we serve. With Gorman's connection to Holy Spirit, I was motivated to join core team and became more involved with the church by working tech on weekend masses I owe a great deal of my spiritual development over the past four years to Bishop Gorman and the people who exemplify what it means to have a close relationship with Jesus Christ. How proud I am of you, Aiden, for beautiful words. How have you lived out Bishop Gorman's high school commitment to serve others in the community especially people in need. I've chosen Kira Kramer.
to answer that question. Kira. Hi, Kira. 100 hours seems like a lot of time when trying to balance schoolwork, extracurricular activities, family responsibilities, daily chores, but it's been some of the best time spent with rewards beyond measure. At Bishop Gorman, I was able to take the next step in my community service by working alongside people in need and talking with them about what matters to them and what help they may need. Through multiple community organizations, I met with people with intellectual disabilities, homeless teens and adults, persons in substance abuse recovery, families of children with significant medical illness, and many others struggling daily to have reliable resources for food and shelter. Volunteering once meant that I helped, greater, meant that I helped gather donations, but Gorman Community Services challenged me to do something different by sharing my time and ability and getting to know people in need, gaining a better understanding of how we can better help others. Thank you for a beautiful answer. I was so impressed with this next writer that I asked that both questions four and five are answered by Carson Sadler. Where are you, Carson? You write beautifully. Thank you. The biggest blessings carrying with you. The biggest blessings I'm carrying with me as a result of the Bishop Gorman experience, lifelong friends. As corny as it may sound, it's true. Every single person I have met has impacted my life. I've made friends that I can't imagine living without. I've made friends that I want in my wedding. I've made friends that I want to visit when we are wrinkly and old. The people that Gorman calls students are some of the best people I've ever met, and I'm so excited to call them my friends. I cannot wait to see what each will do after we graduate. The thing I did most here at Gorman, this is a great answer, <laughs> wasn't studying, wasn't practicing for lacrosse, it was laughing. I have never gone a day without laughing or having something extremely funny happen. The most recent thing that happened to me that I can't tell if it's funny or just embarrassing is sending my senior photo to the entire senior class. I received an email from a girl at the school asking seniors to send a photo of us for a senior slideshow. Right away, I sent a photo of myself back to the email a couple minutes went by and my phone started blowing up with people sending me a photo of the photo I just emailed. I came to realize that I just emailed my senior photo to the entire class by accident. So now everyone has a photo of me readily available on your iPad. <laughs> That's very sweet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bishop Gorman claims to form the whole person during a student's time. What does this mean, and how has this commitment to excellence touch your life? I've chosen Lauren Sung to respond. Lauren. This is also really cool. Coming into high school, I was not even sure that I was a half person much less a whole person. I didn't know what career I wanted to pursue, what classes I should take, what people I should try to be friends with. Over the course of high school, I truly feel as if I have achieved whole person status. Gorman is ma has made me become a much more confident individual. Rigorous classes have prepared me for college, and I have further developed my character through the leadership skills I've learned in my clubs and support. The emphasis on religion has also allowed me to grow spiritually. The commitment to excellence that Gorman promotes has touched my life because it, is, it has pushed me to strive to be the best version of myself and to be confident in my whole self, my whole heart, and my whole mind. 
How beautifully written. Congratulations. <laughs> Question seven. I asked, who have been your best role models at Bishop Gorman and why? I have selected four students for this. Gigi, Jenna, Braden, and Jocelyn. Please come forward. Gigi, selected Dr. Hancock as one of her favorites. He is an extraordinary force, literally ha, because he teaches physics. His teaching of physics inspired me to fall in love with the subject, to fall in love with science itself, even when I doubted I could excel in such a complex subject. Doc Hancock has an answer to nearly every question can put concepts into practical perspective like no one else I've ever met. More importantly, Doc is not just another teacher, but now a dear friend. And I thank him for making me feel more grounded and opening my eyes to a world of possibilities like I've never known before. Thank you, Dr. Hancock, and thank you, Gigi. So beautifully written. <laughs> Jenna. Jenna wrote, the best role model has to be Ms. Ferranti Martin. Starting out at Bishop Gorman, I was terrified to speak in front of anyone, and presentations were the worst. But after working alongside her, I learned how to face my fears and overcome them. She taught me skills that I can use inside and outside the classroom, and has truly prepared me for the real world. She's taught me to strive for perfection, keep going no matter what. I've never met anyone so dedicated to their work and to their students. She's been an amazing teacher, director, and influence during my high school years, and she will continue to be for many years to come. Thank you, Ms. Ferranti Martin, and thank you, Jenna. Beautiful. Hey, Braden. Mr. Radzek and Dr. Hancock, have been some of the most influential people in my life. I've had the pleasure to learn from both of these individuals, and their teaching will always be there with me. Mr. Radzak demonstrates how teaching should be done. With that same theme, Doc's teaching theory is far the best I've ever heard. He gets you to learn to love the subject. His personality creates a fun class and keeps you interested in the subject that some say is boring. Thank you for being such great role models, Mr. Radzik, Dr. Hancock, and by far the best teachers I've ever had the privilege to learn from. And thank you, Braden. <laughs> Jocelyn, I love this answer. Very unique answer to the best role model question. She wrote this. My best role models at Bishop Gorman have been the security guards. They go out of their way to help in any situation. They rarely greet you without a smile on their face. They maintain order at the school with such a positive attitude. Thank you for giving them a shout out. That is tender and great. And I'm proud of you, Jocelyn. It was Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross who wrote this. If we could see all things, even tragedy, as a blessing in disguise, we'd find the best way to nourish our souls. And so I ask students this question. How has the COVID pandemic impacted you positively or negatively? In these next three students, you'll hear very unique answers. Michael Gugino, Ellie Schmidt, and Farid Sage, please come down. Michael, 
The COVID pandemic has been overall for me positive. I found activities that I love like fitness and cooking, time to pursue them and to better myself physically. Although I missed seeing my friends, technology really helped me to stay in touch with them and therefore I felt socially unaffected. Thank you for your reflection. And Ellie, the COVID pandemic impacted me both positively and negatively in many different ways. Negatively caused loss and grief with my family as well as for myself, with me losing strength. As more time and quarantine went on, I began to feel lost inside, only being at home with my family every day, not getting many experiences. I began to lose myself and my faith. It also impacted me positively, allowing me to grow as a person and to become the best version of myself possible once I began to pick myself back up. It taught me the importance of life and family, of never taking anything for granted because life can change in an instant and enjoy every day as it comes to be grateful for the little things. After a while, it became difficult for my family to spend every moment together, but we became closer. And I closed myself with my faith. I'm so grateful for this time in quarantine because I don't know if I can say things here that didn't happen. They're beautiful words. And thank you for your reflection. Farid, the COVID pandemic has taken a lot from me. A typical senior year, simple enjoyments like going to a restaurant. As it progressed, the biggest thing it took away from me was hope. For a while, I thought there would be no end to the masks. Guess not yet. Social, dist <laughs> social distancing, never going to a movie theater again. But today, there's hope for a normal future. A time for our smiles will once be the only thing on our faces, where we will be comfortable together again. To every situation, there is a positive. And I think positive here, how our community, although six feet apart, can still be as strong as ever. This pandemic has shown us just how resilient and resourceful we are. The world has created new innovative ways to communicate and collaborate again, although still a bit away from what it was, we will continue to strive. Fareed, thank you. Beautifully written. <laughs> Dear class of 2021, you've heard the voices of your peers. They have helped you open up your own box of memories by sharing their personal and touching memories with you. And for that, I thank all of them. Let all of your memories serve as a symbol, a symbol for you, class of 21, a symbol that you are strong and determined and resilient and resolute and gifted, able to move into the future with confidence, undaunted, and fearless and faith-filled. I ask only this of you this night to also build your life upon the one unshakable foundation sent to us from heaven above, Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is the definitive answer to the question of the meaning of life. You stand on a firm foundation, class of 21. God bless you. We love you. We believe in you. Go Gales. Amen. Thank you, guys. Beautiful words. We now continue our prayers for our class, for one another, and for the needs of the entire church.
We pray for the church, for all of its leaders and for all of its ministers, especially for Pope Francis and Bishop Thomas, that they may always display in their words and actions the love of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our civic leaders at the local, state, and national level, that they may work to create legislation and govern in a manner that respects the dignity of all human life and advances the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the members of the class of 2021 at Bishop Gorman High School, that they will continue to grow in faith and offer lives of service as they go forth to college and beyond. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the parents of the seniors at Bishop Gorman High School, the primary educators, that they will be given the grace and wisdom that they need to continue to guide their children as they begin to live their adult lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the faculty and staff at Bishop Gorman High School, that they may continue to be blessed with the wisdom and grace of the Holy Spirit to be effective in their ministry as Catholic school educators. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, that the Lord will give them consolation and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have died, especially our family members, friends, and those from Bishop Gorman community, that they will enjoy eternal happiness with God forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Look with favor upon us as we gather in your name and send abundant blessings into the class of 2021 and all those we love. Open their eyes to see you more clearly. Open their ears to hear your word. Open their hands in loving service and their hearts in joyful praise. Keep them safe and steady and faith-filled all the days of their lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring into the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with each one of you. And let us offer each other a verbal greeting of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the great unknown where feet may fail and there i find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and i will call My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest water. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and then you won't start now. And I will call. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring and restore us 
through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit through Christ our Lord. You please be seated. And now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop Thomas. We would like to uh, extend our thanks to a number of individuals this evening who have helped us to celebrate uh, this liturgy. First of all, uh, when the pandemic hit last year and we were going to Mass virtually or even being able to come back in person in limited groups, one of the things I missed the most was live, prayerful liturgical music. And tonight we'd like to thank our small, we'll call them a little scola of seniors and an alum and a faculty member and a member of Holy Spirit. So to our musicians, thank you very much this evening. Uh, we want to thank the staff of Holy Spirit. Uh, Kayla was over there, Eliana, uh, Scott, everyone who's helped us. Uh, Father Bill is incredibly hospitable to us uh, as we are next door neighbors, and the staff of Holy Spirit has just gone above and beyond. So to the staff of Holy Spirit, thank you so much. The clergy who are here today uh, have come to celebrate with us. First, we'd like to thank Deacon Aruna Silva, who is the Chief Financial Officer of the Diocese, also a parent. This is his second student graduating from Bishop Vorman. Uh, Deacon Aruna has been a tremendous help uh, to myself, to Mr. Kilduff, to Bishop Vorman, and to the diocese. And we thank him for everything he is doing and for proclaiming the gospel so beautifully this evening. Thank you, Deacon Aruna. <laughs> what can we say about Father Bill? Well, you don't have that much time, do you? No. <laughs> you know, Father Bill is a spiritual uh, support for Bishop Gorman because he's an alum of Bishop Gorman. He is next door neighbors to us. He comes over at any point in time when we need him. He goes on retreats. He comes and does school masses. He provides support at any time that we need. And uh, you all will find this as you grow older, the seniors. Um, I always tell the seniors, you guys don't quite understand that all these people over here and up here, once you get to know us outside of the context of school, you find, oh my gosh, they actually are funny. They, they do fun things. They have lives. They, they tell jokes. They send memes to each other. I had to do something during the pandemic. Like, Father Bill, I sent him one yesterday because it was on the internet, of course. It's a picture of Holy Spirit, not this Holy Spirit, a different Holy Spirit. And it said on the church sign for Holy Spirit, the masks are ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. He found that very funny. We can't say enough to have priestly support in our school and for everything that he has done for us and continues to do for us. And, you know, he's celebrating his 50th anniversary as a priest next month. What a tremendous service. We, we love you, Father Bill, and thank you for everything. Three years ago, on a Tuesday, Bishop Thomas was installed as the Bishop of the Diocese of Las Vegas, and two days later, he had to do his first baccalaureate mass. It was quite impressive, because he delivered an incredible homily, which was using the words of our graduating seniors. Bishop Thomas is an ardent supporter of Catholic education, of youth and young adult ministry, and he is a wonderful shepherd for the Diocese of Las Vegas. He tremendously supports us, supports the faculty, the staff, the administration, myself. Uh, everything that he is doing uh, is for the glory of God, the proclamation of Jesus Christ, and the building of the kingdom here on earth and to get us to heaven. And he, you couldn't find a much better supporter for Catholic schools anywhere in the country or the world. And he has graced us with his presence this evening, and we want to thank you, Bishop Thomas. I also want to thank our invisible master of ceremonies, Mr. Lynn Urso, for helping keep everything running up here and doing air traffic control. Uh, we appreciate you, Mr. Urso. Thank you for all that you're doing. Finally, I want to thank our parents and families for being here, those that are here in person and those of you who may be watching this on the live stream on YouTube or on a replay. The students who you have entrusted to us over the past four years, we couldn't have done it without your help and support. 
Uh, we know the role you have played in their formation academically, spiritually, socially, emotionally, artistically. Pick another Lee, you've done it all. And we know that you were the one who did that third grade science fair project, we know. <laughs> they wouldn't have been here without you. So to the parents, the primary educators in faith, thank you for entrusting us with your children. Thank you for letting us celebrate with them. We are so excited for you and for your graduates. Graduates, give your parents a hand. Thank you all so much for being here. It has been an honor and privilege to pray with you, and we are looking forward to continuing the celebration on Saturday morning. Bishop Thomas. Peter, I think that uh, gratitude would be very incomplete if I didn't say on behalf of this very grateful assembly how wonderful you are, along with Mr. Kilduff and the rather exceptional administrative staff and faculty that we have at Gorman. I've served in Helena Diocese and the Archdiocese of Seattle, I've been around schools and colleges a very long time. I think we have the cream of the crop. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's stand now for the final blessing. May the Father of mercies bless you in every way and grant you peace all the days of your lives. May Christ free your hearts from fear and anxiety and strengthen your hearts in his love. Amen. May you walk in his ways, knowing what is right and good until you see our Father face to face. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Stop.